Today on The Hookup, we're gonna take a look at what appears to be the next big trend in home security cameras, ultra low light color night vision cameras. These cameras can take even the smallest amount of light and turn it into an amazingly accurate nighttime color image. Color images are not only nicer to look at, but they're better for computer vision, and as an added bonus, the lack of infrared LEDs means that your cameras won't attract bugs at night. And no bugs means no spider webs being built in front of your cameras. Today, I've got 10 low light cameras from seven different manufacturers, and I'll show you why after my testing, I've narrowed it down to this 4K camera from Anki and this four megapixel hike vision from Empire Tech. Let's take a look at the 10 low light cameras that I tested in this video, starting with the least expensive. For $95, we've got the VicViz IPC 2387C 4K color night vision camera. $105 gets you this Dawa IPC HD BW2831E 4K starlight camera. For $109 is the new Reolink RLC 811A, a 4K resolution camera with four times optical zoom. Also at $109 is the Dawa IPC HTW2439T 4 megapixel turret camera. Anki's NC400 is a 4 megapixel bullet that costs $130. This huge 4 megapixel hike vision color view is sold by Empire Tech under the name Lorita on Amazon and costs $150. Amcrest 4 megapixel color night vision turret camera is $190. Lorix's Nocturnal 4K series is $270 for this black bullet camera with four times optical zoom. Then for $280 is Anki's new NC800, which is a 4K ultra low light bullet camera. And last, the most expensive camera in this video is the $319 Uniview 4K Light Hunter bullet camera. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or maker, and you haven't checked out PCBWay, you are seriously missing out. They obviously produce full featured printed circuit boards with a ton of different materials and options, but now they offer basically everything you need to turn your ideas into a physical reality. Whether you need 3D printing, injection molding, CNC machining, assembly, or just plain old PCB manufacturing, PCBWay can do it all for highly competitive prices. Check out PCBWay's awesome services using the link in the description to support this channel. First, I wanna start with a quick explanation of how these color night vision cameras work. Photography has always been all about getting light onto film, or in the case of digital photography, onto a sensor. You wanna let enough light hit the sensor that you get good color information, but not so much that your image gets washed out and shows up as white. Since lighting conditions are always changing, there are three different settings to adjust to get the best picture for any given amount of light, which are collectively called the exposure settings. The first is aperture, which is the size of the hole in the front of the camera where the light comes in. Generally speaking, in security cameras, the aperture is fixed, and even though a large aperture would be ideal for letting in more light, security cameras need to use relatively small apertures since large ones are associated with the shallow depth of field effect where part of the image is blurry while others are sharp. The second setting you can mess with is shutter duration, or how long you expose the sensor to the light for any given image. In bright conditions, you might want a shutter duration of 1 1,000th of a second or less, but when there's less light, you need to leave the shutter open for longer to collect more light. In a security camera, this causes two issues. First, if you set your shutter speed to something like 1 12th of a second, that means that you could collect a maximum of 12 pictures per second. But that doesn't work if your camera is supposed to output 30 frames per second. So each frame actually becomes an average of the frames before it and after it. Second, if your subject is moving fast, then the light reflected off their body will be in multiple positions over the course of a 12th of a second, leading to a smeared or blurry looking image. The third setting that you can change is called the ISO in photography and gain in security cameras. And it basically calibrates how much light each pixel in the sensor needs to collect before it activates. If you take a quiet audio file and you turn up the volume really high, you get a noisy audio file. And similarly, if you take a really dim image and you turn up the gain, you get a really noisy image. Noise can be caused by actual stray photons entering the camera, but more often than not, they're false activations of the sensors caused by electrical interference. Higher quality sensors can have more gain with less noise, and better image processors can do better post-processing to clean up smearing and do digital noise reduction. All of this translates into a higher cost camera producing a higher quality image, which seems obvious. But there are a few things that camera manufacturers can do to get better low light images for less money. The first thing that a camera manufacturer can do is reduce the resolution. As you probably know, a camera's resolution is based on the number of actual pixels in the sensor. 
If you multiply the horizontal resolution by the vertical and then divide that number by a million, that will tell you the number of megapixels in the image. Most of the cameras in this video are either 2688 by 1520, which is four megapixels, or 3840 by 2160, which is eight megapixels, and commonly called 4K resolution. Generally speaking, if you have bright conditions, a sensor with a higher pixel count will produce a higher quality image because there's more pixels to show those subtle color changes. And during the day, that's definitely the trend that I saw where the 4K cameras outperform the four megapixel cameras. But at night, those 4K sensors divide up the same limited amount of light over twice as many pixels, meaning that each pixel gets half as much light and either needs to increase the gain or slow down the shutter speed to produce the same quality image. Also relating to resolution is the clarity versus field of view trade-off. Field of view is the number of degrees that each camera can see from side to side and up and down. If you have two cameras with the exact same resolution but different fields of view, you would expect the wide field of view to have less sharpness because the same number of pixels has to represent a larger physical space. But in the case of nighttime color vision, a wide field of view will collect light from a larger area. So even though the clarity will be less, a wide field of view camera should produce a higher quality color night vision image. So with that knowledge in mind, when testing these cameras, we wanna find the one that stands out. We know that a low resolution wide field of view camera will produce the best nighttime image, but it should also have the worst daytime clarity. What we're hoping for is to find an outlier that performs well in both situations without significantly increasing the cost of the components. So let's start out by looking at field of view, which is pretty difficult to measure perfectly, but I did my best in Photoshop to line up the images and rank them from widest, which was the Amcrest, down to narrowest, which was the real link. In all of my tests, the cameras will be ranked from one to 10, and at the end of testing, the camera with the lowest overall score should be the best. Next, let's check out what we're all here to see, the nighttime color images. The first set of tests were done with no supplemental lighting from the cameras and just my normal exterior lights, which are two porch lights and two carriage lights. Under these conditions, an iPhone 11 Pro takes this video, and here's what the cameras see. To get a baseline for sensor performance, I started with a no motion test holding up a sign at 10, 25, and 50 feet. And then to test whether the sensors were able to adequately deal with motion blur, I also did a running test and a car drive-by test at 25 miles per hour. For stationary clarity at night, the Anki 4K produced the best image where the text on the sign is unfortunately blown out, but the details on my face are clear and the rest of the image is nice and crisp. Closely behind that was the four megapixel hike vision color view from Empire Tech that had more noise and blurred edges, but it did accurately reproduce the text on the sign. The Amcrest camera also did pretty well, but there was a lot of smoothing and the digital noise reduction was really obvious. After that was the Anki 4 megapixel, Uniview 4K Bullet, Dawa 4 megapixel turret, Lorex's 4K nocturnal series, the VicViz 4K turret, Dawa's 4K dome camera, and last you can see that the real link is really out of its element at night and probably shouldn't be considered a color night vision camera without its supplemental white LEDs, which we'll talk about later. The running test yielded similar results, but this time the Amcrest did the best job conserving my overall shape. The Empire Tech also did a pretty good job, but you can see a lot of dithering from the digital noise reduction. In third place was the Anki 4K camera that has some blurring and smearing in the moving object, but still produces an overall impressive image with lots of detail for such low light conditions. After that, it was the Dawa 4 megapixel turret, then the Anki 4 megapixel, Lorex 4K nocturnal series, Dawa 4K dome camera, VicViz 4K turret, Uniview 4K bullet, and last again was the Reolink RLC 811A. In the 25 mile per hour car test, the Empire Tech did a great job and I'd easily be able to identify the make, model, and color of the car from the image. Just like the last time, the Amcrest produced more usable frames, but no single frame was better than in the Empire Tech's best frame. The Dawa 4 megapixel and Anki 4K bullet didn't have any great frames, but the overall video was good enough that I would definitely be able to identify the make, model, and color of the car from them. After that was the Anki 4 megapixel, Lorex 4K nocturnal series, Dawa's 4K Dome, VicViz 4K Turret, Reolink RLC 811A, and finally the Uniview 4K Bullet produced nothing but a blur. Next, I stepped up the difficulty a bit by turning my house lights off. The only ambient light in these shots will be from my neighbor's houses, and here's what that scene looks like from an iPhone 11 Pro. And then through the eyes of these cameras. In these conditions, the cameras predictably performed worse, but the Amcrest, Empire Tech, and Anki 4K still did better than the rest. In the walking speed test, the Amcrest had absolutely no signs of smearing, while the Empire Tech was slightly blurry. 
Surprisingly, the VicVis turret that struggled before actually did pretty well under these conditions, and produced an overall darker image but with no smearing, while the Anki 4K is fast approaching a double image. After that was the Dawa 4 megapixel, Anki 4 megapixel, Uniview 4K Bullet, Reolink RLC 811A, Lorix 4K Nocturnal Series, and last was the Dawa Dome. As you can probably guess, running made matters much worse, but the Amcrest still managed to resist smearing. After that, I tried to rate them based on the amount of detail that was preserved in the image, which put the Empire Tech in second and the Anki 4K in third. After that was the Dawa Turret, the VicViz Turret, Anki's 4 Megapixel, Reolink 811A, the Uniview Bullet, the Dawa Dome, and then the Lorex Nocturnal Series. Last but not least for my nighttime test, there's one other way that camera manufacturers can produce a high quality color night image without spending a ton of money on high quality sensors and processors. They can include their own LED light source. All the cameras in this test except for the Lorex and the Dawa Dome have the option of turning on a white LED to supplement the ambient light. For some people, including myself, having a white light on a camera isn't acceptable long term, and it defeats one of the main selling points because a white light will attract even more bugs and spiders than the infrared lights. But the very visible white lights may act as an effective deterrent to let trespassers know they're being recorded. In these tests, all the videos will be slightly different because each camera needed to be tested separately to use only its own supplemental lights. Overall, I was pretty unimpressed by the supplemental lighting, and although there was an increase in the performance across the board, there weren't any bad performers that became great performers. The Uniview and Reolink had the biggest improvements, but they still didn't produce as high quality of an image as the Empire Tech, Amcrest, or Anki 4K did, even without their supplemental lighting. As expected, the supplemental lights made the Amcrest, Empire Tech, and Anki 4K stand out even more. So after nighttime testing, the three best cameras are definitely the Empire Tech 4 megapixel, Amcrest 4 megapixel, and the Anki 4K. But night is only half the story, and we know that generally the strategies that increase nighttime performance will also decrease daytime clarity. So let's check out the daytime tests. During the day, I repeated all the same tests that I did at night, and I repeated them with and without wide dynamic range enabled. Wide Dynamic Range, or WDR, is a setting that increases the brightness of the shadows and decreases highlights. It results in a flatter looking image, but is obviously better for surveillance because you won't lose detail in the highlights and the shadows. Starting with the standard images without WDR, Reolink's RLC 811A produced the typical crisp lines that we're used to seeing in Reolink cameras during the day. And in the 25 foot still shot, both the large and small text are clearly visible as well as all the creases and wrinkles in my face. The Lorix and Uniview produced much more standard looking images with less contrast, but the small text wasn't quite visible. After that, the Anki 4K produced a legible image of the small text, but had more digital noise artifacts than I'd like to see. Then after that was the Anki 4 megapixel, and then the Empire Tech, one of the best night performers, which produced a quality image, but one that was obviously half the resolution of the 4K cameras that finished on top. Unfortunately, Amcrest cameras have suffered from the same issue in every single one of my reviews where the daytime footage is full of compression artifacts like the bitrate is set too low. Even though I set the bitrate extremely high in the camera settings, when I look at the blue iris statistics, the Amcrest has the lowest bitrate by far, which really has to be a bug and is probably the root cause of all the compression issues, but it seems to be standard across all Amcrest cameras. Anyways, next was the daytime running man test, where I thought the Lorex produced a slightly better image than the Reolink, which had its typical high contrast, but some of the detail on my face got lost in the shadows. The 4K cameras from Anki and Uniview also did well in this test, while the 4 megapixel cameras from Anki and Empire Tech finished in the middle of the pack. After that was the Dawa Dome, Dawa Turret, and then the Amcrest, and last the VicViz 4K turret had way too much digital smoothing and lost a lot of detail. The 25 mile an hour car test didn't phase these cameras at all, and most of them produced a nice crisp image of my wife's Model 3. But the Lorix and Uniview images stood out to me as the clearest. The Empire Tech and Anki 4 megapixel cameras did really well considering their lower resolutions and finished in third and fourth place respectively. Then the Anki 4K camera, which was good, if not a little jagged around the edges, and after that was the Dawa Dome, Dawa Turret, Reolink RLC 811A, VicViz turret, and last, the Amcrest image was again full of those compression artifacts. For the wide dynamic range test, there wasn't much to report other than the fact that WDR doesn't work very well on Uniview cameras, and on the Reolink camera, turning on WDR basically just gets it closer to a normal camera without WDR enabled. But the contrast between the shadows and the highlights is still extremely high. 
That said, I think the real link still produced the best image both in moving and still subjects, followed closely by the Anki 4K camera. And since there wasn't a ton of differences in these tests versus the last ones, here's how the rest of the group did in the 25 foot test, and then in the Running Man test. So after all the testing with 37 total points, the 4 megapixel Hike Vision Color View from Empire Tech sneaked out the win from the Anki 4K camera that finished with 39 total points. Unfortunately for the Anki, the Hike Vision Color View managed to do it for half the price. For pure nighttime performance, the Hike Vision Color View is the obvious choice here. But if you need fine detail during the day, the Anki NC800 might be better for you. The Anki also has person and vehicle detection to use with its intrusion detection, line crossing, and region modes, while the Hike Vision from Empire Tech uses object based intrusion detection, line crossing, and object removal events. The 4 megapixel Hike Vision also has face detection, which seems weird that it has face detection and not person detection, but I guess that's a different system. I've got links down in the description for all the cameras that I tested, but I want to take a minute to address some things that have been said about my YouTube channel in some comments and other forums. Some people seem to think that companies are paying me to promote certain products and put down others. And while I can't guarantee you that this doesn't happen on other YouTube channels, I can guarantee you that it doesn't happen here. When I have a highly requested video topic like this one, I reach out to different manufacturers and I tell them about the video that I'm planning to make, and then they send me a product that they think would perform well in the testing. No money changes hands, and while I love seeing new tech and making these videos, I already have a whole closet full of unused security cameras, so I'm not influenced by just getting free stuff. YouTube is now officially my full-time job, but I get paid from Patreon, YouTube ads, clearly marked sponsored video segments, and affiliate links, not shady deals with companies. If the dozens of hours of testing that I put into these videos helps you pick out a camera, then you can buy them through the links in the description, and I get a small percentage of the sale at no cost to you. It doesn't matter to me which camera you buy. In fact, the only thing that matters is that you're happy with it so you don't return it. So in that case, it's in all of our best interest for me to recommend only the best cameras to you. I don't work for any of these companies and I'm not rooting for any particular camera when I start these tests. I just test them and I report the results. No payoff would be worth me compromising the integrity of my channel, which I mentioned is now my full-time job. So with that out of the way, I want to thank my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, you can check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.